All right, to continue our assignment five, spot illustration project, we are now squarely into the coloring phase. So I'm going to open up my project, my demo. I'm doing the tiger for this class, the work in progress. Started with a sketch. We refine that sketch as a vector. We learned lots of different ways to do that. And then this was the flat color that I had added at the end of the class on Wednesday. And this flat color is just the most basic kind of approach. And then I said the hardest thing about flat color is finding the right colors. So let me open up that file because I spent some time working with it to adjust my flat colors because that's time well spent. And I was pulling colors from these inspiration files. You can always add to your inspirations. So the next step was defining certain black or certain uh, shapes. So in your flat colors, once you have them, you can see that now I start, I can use kind of any color I want, but I can divide it up. So if I want to color this nostril in with this kind of rust color, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so this is what I ended up with. Everything is, is filled. If I turn off my line art, everything is separate too. So if I wanted to make the teeth match, for instance, because I filled in the teeth with if I fill the background with gray or with black, I filled it in with an off-white, not a solid white, but something pretty close. Because even your whites need to have some option to them. So, for instance, if I choose white, if I want to just make it a slightly off-white, usually a little warm and creamy is what I'll use, something like this then I can just drop that color in. And then same thing for these teeth, if I want to make those match. So that's why you do the flatting. So you have full control of all the different colors. Whether you have the black line art on or not. The problem is, some of those colors are all connected, like that orange. So if I want to subdivide it and get more interesting flat color, because it's the color the thing is, the local flat color, not just what's contained by lines, then I can use my brush. I make it 100% hard. I'll, I'll usually use pressure sensitive. And I'll choose a color that I want the thing to be. So I'm going to choose kind of this darker, rusty red. And then I'm going to subdivide the illustration. So I'll connect one line art to the other to build it in. Like I did with the temp files here where I contained it in places where it's open. So this is now a coloring way to subdivide your flat color if you need to. So for the nostril I can just kind of hook that, hook that. What that does on the flat color layer is make it so this is separate from this. Make sense? So now I can go in with my paint bucket and I could fill it in. So now I have a, a separate flat color within. What are some other ways I might subdivide this? I'll even turn the background off so you can see. I might want this part to be lighter than the rest of the tiger. So I might take my brush I might pick, you know, a lighter color. It doesn't matter what you cut with, but I like to cut with the color I'm thinking of filling it in with. And I cut it there, and I cut it here, anywhere it connects with the, the other color. You can have the line art turned on or not. Remember, we have that locked. It's helpful to have the line art turned on so you don't go over your edges because you just have to connect line to line. And then, 
that leaves it so that these flat colors are separate from the rest of them, and I can drop that color in. Like that, or like that. So it takes a while, you kind of tinker, you find the colors you want certain things to be, you spread out your palette, you use as many colors as you like. I can keep extending it, holding down Option. I can even add kind of grays in there. And maybe I want to separate out the eye. Maybe I want the eye to be this deeper orange, you know, the area around the eye. So then I go to my flat color, I use this with a brush, I connect from outline to outline, because there's just so many options you have all underneath your vector line art. And then I can just drop it in with the paint bucket with contiguous turned on. And then I hold down option and depending on the colors around it, I might change these colors, mess with these colors. I can subdivide out this nose because I want this to catch more light. So I'll use a different color, connect it here, the bridge of the nose, and then drop that in. So that's the beauty of coloring this way is it gets you access to everything pretty quickly. Maybe the snout, I want a different color. Maybe a light blue, because there's just a lot of orange, so I'll use its complement. And the more you're used to color theory and painting, you know, the easier these decisions are. The technical side is just being able to know how to separate out color shapes that go behind the line art. And this is all for the most basic type of coloring, which is called flat color. Maybe I want to extend that. Maybe I want to take a, a gray that's lighter. Let's find one here. And then I want to divide up this bottom so the chin is different than the, the side hair. So you're not limited to just where your lines connect for flat color. You can build your flat color in multiple ways. So in that way, like using it all these different ways, these are the flat colors I decided on. And you can kind of see where those come from. And where it doesn't match, where it doesn't overlap, I can fix that now. This is in a new layer. Right. I'll just go back to before I showed you how to do that. Right. And then all you'll have left are these little transitions sometimes. If you didn't know exactly the color you used to divide it, and then maybe you chose a different color. These divisions can be helpful to you. And we can use them in different ways. So for instance, if I duplicate this layer, the one underneath, and then merge them together, and I'll mark this as my new flat color layer, then I can simply decide with my magic wand to make this blue, on the one side, or to make it the rust color on the other side. And I think I like the rust color. So then I'll do that. Actually, the blue is a little bit cleaner. I'll do the blue. And then I can do that here as well. Same thing. Wherever I did these internal lines, I can decide. I'm going to use the dark gray darker, warmer gray, hold down option, select it, color it in, just refining my flat color. I like to throw in some random colors there like our campus green. It's not a color I usually use. So it makes it pretty interesting to see what I can do with that. Now sometimes this is the last step. So you'll notice I changed the eye. I'm actually, yeah, let's go ahead and make that 
fully dark, not fully dark. And if you want to adjust it, remember this is all behind your line art. I can always repaint it and clean that up. Because where you place these lines is completely up to you, these divisions between your flat color when they're not contained shapes. And then I also subdivided this top. I made this top section lighter than this bottom section. The bridge, I even filled in this with purple. And now that that's all subdivided, these are my flat colors that I can now build on with the next step. Okay, so flat color, incredibly important. Some students feel like they're finished at this step as long as you've chosen the right colors. You may well be. And this is some of that kind of stair-stepping that the live tracing and illustrator did, the image tracing. And I can even use my flat color to fix this a little bit. I can just take my lasso on my flat color layer and then bridge them. Is it giving me trouble? So, huh. Oh, because I have a I was doing something where I had a huge feather. I don't want any feathering. So I'm going to make little loops just to connect these stair steps that are in the vector line art. I'm not going to change the vector line art, but then I can just fill those with black right in the flat color. So it looks like that in the flat color. And it helps to smooth out those stair steps when you see them. So you're not stuck. You don't have to redo your vector and then bring it back, even if you're going for something really, really clean but and finished. So so those just tiny little gaps, we're talking about one or two pixel gaps on those stair steps, those are part of the coloring. And those will scale up. But the vector line art is the only thing that will scale up perfectly clean because computer rendered color scales up perfectly as well, except at the edges. Does that make sense? So this is a place we can see it. I have this green, bright green circle on this eye. So I actually put in an uncontained circle shape here as a flat color. As So let's uh, make this image a whole lot bigger, even though it's already a large image size, but let's make it, you know, 40 inches. 40 inches wide. It did it. It did it faster than I thought I would do it. So it did soften it a little bit there. But all the pixels inside, you can't even tell because they're all one flat pixel all the way across. So where we're, if we're doing it digitally, the only change is if I toggle between this image size. Oh, you know what? I don't think I, yeah, it changed my resolution. I didn't have a resample. <laughs> so let's go back to here. Because it used the exact same number of pixels. If I do image size to show this point, and I hit resample, and I do 40. So I'm making it now 713 megabytes instead of 54. It's going to soften these edges. But my black line art, because it's a, a vector, is going to stay sharp. So it's only the uncontained edges that are going to blur a little bit. And what that we call that just softer edged coloring. So coloring can be hard edged or soft edged as we go to the next step. Now, of course, you could do all your flat color in Illustrator as well. You would just draw each of these shapes behind the black lines in Illustrator and fill in behind them like stained glass. But that's more for like a color logo than anything else. So this is a lot bigger. So if we zoom in now on that same place, you can see the line art's perfect. The fills are still perfect, but the edges of 
places where